Dear students, this is 11th Zoology video class, chapter 2, Kingdom Animalia, part 5, chapter 2, Kingdom Animalia, part 5. Last video class, we have seen non chordates that is invertebrata phylum porifera we have seen what are the characteristic features of phylum porifera we have seen the next one phylum nidaria we have seen phylum nidaria what are the characters phylum nidaria has so all these things we are seen. So this is examples of phylum nidarian. The next topic is the one phylum tinopora. Phylum tinopora. Okay. Here it is a Greek word. Tinos means comb forest means bearing so tinopora are exclusively marine they are biradially symmetrical and diploplastic animals with tissue level of organization so they have tissue level of organization they are diploplastic animals they have mesoglia is different from that of nidaria so their mesoglia is different from nidaria and so it contains amoebocytes amoebocytes and smooth muscle cells underlying amoebocytes that's a type of cells and smooth muscles they have they have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates. They have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates. That's we call as a comb jellies, which help in locomotions. Which help in locomotions. I'll show you the eight external rows of ciliated. The picture you can see here. This is the image of Tinopora example Pyrobrachia. Example Pyrobrachia. And this organism have eight external rows of ciliated comb plates. You can, can you find rows, eight rows like this? lined one dot like structures from bottom to top of here this is what we call as a eight external rows of ciliated comb plates that is because of comb jellies so this helps which one this comb jelly this eight rows helps in locomotions so hence it is commonly called as comb jellies or sea walnuts or sea Walnuts. The bioluminescence means the ability of living organism to emit light that is we call as a bioluminescence. So this organism, this pleurobrachia, they have one special features that is we call as a bioluminescence, which means they emit light at night time. Okay, it is a well marked in tinopores. In tinopores, this bioluminescence is very well marked. That's what they say. And they lack nematocytes, but possess special cells called as a lasso cells or colloblasts, which help in food capture. Digestion is both 
extracellular and intracellular. Sexes are not separate, that is because of monoecious. They reproduce only by sexual means. The fertilization is ex external and development is indirect and includes a larval stage called sidipid, sidip larva, called sidip larva. Example, pleurobrachia. This is what the pleurobrachia, this picture can be found in your textbook, you can go through. Okay, these are the characteristic features of Tinopora. The next topic is the one, phylum Platy helminthes. Phylum Platy helminthes. So, okay, here the phylum Platy helminthes, also called as a platworm. Phylum Platy helminthes is also called as platworms. It is a Greek word. Platy means broad or we can say flat. Helmin means worms. We will see what are the characteristic features of Platy helminthes. They have a dorsal ventrally flattened body. So here this flat worm they have dorsal, dorsal side as well as, the, as well as the ventral side. Their body is very flattened one. That is why it is called as a flat worm. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical. Triploblastic animals. You know what I mean by triploblastic animals? And they have false coelums. In that false coelum, the fluids will be filled. That is, we call it a coelomates with organ system level of organization. They have organ system. They show moderate cephalization. Only the moderate cephalization. Moderate means somewhat they're changing little bit, little bit. And they have cephalizations, moderate cephalization. They have head regions, that is, we call as a cephalization. Cephalo means head. In this organism, they have moderate cephalizations and unidirectional movement. Their movement will go only one direction. That is why it is called as a unidirectional movement. They are mostly endoparasites of animals, including human beings. So here, this animal, this platy helminthes, they are mostly endoparasites. They are including human beings. And they have hooks and suckers. They are, what is the use of these hooks and suckers? Means in the parasites farms, they serve as organs of attachments, these hooks and suckers, the hooks are used for attachment of the organisms. And suckers means used to absorb the food materials. For that purpose, the suckers are used. The body is not segmented, but some exhibit pseudo segmentations. Pseudo segmentation means false segmentations. Some of parasitic platworms absorb nutrients directly from the host through their body surface and they absorb directly food and nutrients from the host cells. The flatworms like liver fluke have incomplete digestive system underlying the last few. The flatworms like liver fluke have incomplete digestive system Specialized excretory cells they have that cells called as a flame cells one word important one word you can underline This flame cells helps in osmoregulations and the excretions very very important one word Osmoregulations and excretions Sexes are separate sexes are not separate that is we call as a monoecious Fertilization is internal and development is through a larval stage. At this we call some miracidium. Miracidium. Then sporocyst, radia, sarcaria. So these are the larval stage of the platy helminthes. And there is a one word because a poly embryony. Poly embryony. 
what does it mean polyembryony here so these are the examples of plati helminthes you can find planaria planaria liver fluke and tapeworm planaria liver fluke and tapeworm these are the examples of plati helminthes planaria liver fluke tapeworm here polyembryo is common in some flatworm like liver flukes some members like planaria show high regeneration capacity what is high regeneration capacity once if any one organ is lost in their body mean that last body will grow fully that is we call as a regenerations example stenia solium it's a tapeworm or fasciola hepatica that is because a liver fluke cystosomia that is because a blood fluke the next topic is the one phylum asylmenthes is asylmenthes is also called as round worm asylmenthes is also called as round worm so here this is also called as a greek word this asylmenthes is called as a greek asks means cavity asks means cavity okay helminthes means helminths means worms here this asylmenthes previously called nematoda one way they'll ask you just underline this phylum is now named as asylmenthes the body of these worms is circular in the cross sections circular in cross sections if you cut these animals and just observe under electron microscope or normal microscope you can find cross sections circular cross sections ends are called as a round worms they are free living a parasitic on aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals they are bilaterally symmetrical they are bilaterally symmetrical and they are triploplastic animals and they are pseudocoelomates animals with organ system level of organizations the body is unsegmented and covered by transparent so you can find here examples of asylmenthes ascaris that is filarial worms the next next one is the one hook worms so these are the examples of asylmenthes okay then we'll see next topic is the one in continuations of and they have tough and protective collagenous layer called as a cuticles the elementary canal is complete with a well developed mouth muscular pharynx and anus your excretory system consists of rennet glands underlying rennet glands are present dash asylmenthes what is the purpose of this rennet glands for purpose of excretory system excretory organs sexes are separate and exhibits sexual dimorphisms sexual dimorphisms a sexual dimorphism in male and female will be separated but often the females are longer than the male so fertilization is internal the majority are oviparous example ascaris few are ova viviparous what is oviparous animal which lay egg and just hatch out egg one that is because of oviparous what is ova viviparous animals which produce egg inside the body and hatch out egg one that is because of ova viviparous examples vacaria development may be indirect or direct or indirect here the examples ascaris lubricoids or this because of round worms enterobius vermicularis that is pin worms 
Vakaria bankrupt, that is because of filarial worms. Ankle, ankylostoma, duodenal, and cyclostoma, duodenal, hookworm. So these are the characteristics of Asenmanthus. The next topic is the one Analita. Next topic is the one Analita. The Sanoida will continue next video class. So today we have completed Phylum Asenmanthus here. Phylum Asenmanthus we have completed and also we have seen Phylum Platyhelminthus. Yeah, this is today that we have completed Platyhelminthus also and Tinopor also we have completed. So go through whatever we have just completed the phylum invertebrata. Today itself just learn. If you have any doubt, you can contact me. Just go through today itself learn and just write in your classwork. If you have any doubt, you can contact me through WhatsApp number. Okay. Bye. Take care.